Som Gedalia, the man who was appointed as governor by the Babylonians after they destroyed the first Beit HaMikdash. Now, righteous as he may have been, in order to understand why this day became a fast that we commemorate every year, we need to understand the context, and part of that is certainly the setting. The city of Mizpah, that is where Gedalia had his capital, as chosen by the Babylonians. And in this video, I'm going to try to answer the questions of what else do we know about Mizpah, and what important things can it teach us about Gedalia's story. I'm sitting now on top of the building known in Arabic as Nebi Samuel, which of course is named after Shemuel Hanavi. It was a crusader fortress, which was later turned into a mosque, and then finally today into a synagogue down in the basement. And the association with Shemuel Hanavi leads to two possible conclusions as to what the ancient name of the place was. Either it was Ramah, where we know from the Haftarah of the first day of Rosh Hashanah, that's where Shemuel was born, he lived there, and was buried there. Or perhaps this place is really Mizpah, the place where Shemuel Nabi famously gathered Israel to fast and to pray. As we say in our Siliyahat, Da'anei the Shemuel ba Mizpah anenan. God who answered Shemuel and Mizpah should answer us. As far as the meaning behind the names, Ramah means a very high place and Mizpah means a lookout. Now the fact that a crusader fortress was built here is very telling. In ancient times, both Mizpah and Ramah were heavily fortified cities. They were north of Jerusalem. Uh, here you see remains from the first temple period. Big structures were found. And both cities were along the road that led from the north towards Jerusalem, which is why they were fortified. Now the cities of Ramah and Mizpah were fortified during the first temple period in the days of Asa, Melech Yehuda, and Baasha, Melech Yisrael. When the nation was divided into two kingdoms. Now Asa was a very righteous king, he was very popular amongst his own people and even amongst the people in the north who started coming back. They started coming back to Yerushalayim on the holidays which troubled Baasha very much. So what he did, Baasha built up Ramah as sort of a watchtower to make sure nobody could go along the road to Yerushalayim. But later on Asa ends up destroying it. He calls up all of his people and says, en Nobody was exempt. And they had to destroy Ramah, take the stones and the lumber, and use it to build the new city, Mizpah, which was now his watchtower along the road to make sure that the road would remain open, that people can come to Yerushalayim. Now, it seems like a very noble thing that he did, but interestingly, our rabbis are critical of these words, en naki, nobody was exempt, because the word naki also appears in the Torah, in Parshaki Teseh, where there it says that a man who recently got married, he cannot be called upon to go to war or for any other projects, Says, so from here our rabbis learn that Asa called up even the grooms and even the brides that recently got married and made them be a part of this project and they were critical of that decision and therefore it says he was punished at the end of his life, he became sick but we'll see that this comes back to haunt the city of Mizpah even in the days of Gedaliah. So one of the most tragic events surrounding the story of Gedaliah is what happens the very next day. Nobody in the country knows yet that Gedaliah has been assassinated. And all of a sudden, a group of travelers, a group of men come from Shechem, from Shiloh, and from Shomron, and they pass by Mizpah on their way to Yerushalayim. They have in their hands Benha and the Bonat to bring his korbanot, and their clothing are already ripped. So either they heard on the way, or maybe even before they left, they knew that Beit HaMikdash was destroyed, but they decided, we're still gonna go, we're gonna go see the place of where the Beit HaMikdash was. And Ishmael ben Tanyan and his hitmen, they get nervous. Apparently they're worried that these people are gonna let the cat out of the bag. They have to cover their tracks. So they invite the people into the city. They come out crying to them. They say, come, come to Gedaliah. And once they're in the city, they kill them, 70 people. And it says that they put all the bodies into a pit. Just like this pit we have right here. Now I'm not necessarily claiming that this is the same pit from the story. I looked down there, didn't see any bones or anything. If there would be, that would be super creepy. But then Abi tells us some very obscure words here. It says that this pit was the one Asher Asa HaMelech Asa Mepenei Ba'asha Melech Yisrael. So these words seem to have nothing to do with the story, but now that we know the context, we know that Asa fortified Mizpah, and even though it doesn't say anything about him digging a pit, Malabim explains that he probably dug a pit for water so that people would have water on their way to Shalim. And now the irony is glaring. People are coming on their way to Shalim, they pass through a spot, and they meet this tragic fate, 
And now the words of our rabbis make all the more sense because it was sort of conceived in sin, in the end it became a place of tragedy. Thankfully, the tragedy of Gedalia did not succeed in destroying us as a nation, and a few hundred years later, a hero returns to Mispa by the name of Yehudah HaMakabi. Now Yehudah HaMakabi knew his history well. He knew that since the days of Shemuel, this was a place of prayer, so he invites his soldiers to pray and fast in Mispa. But he also sets the record straight with one more thing. On the eve of battle, he tells all his soldiers, whoever recently got married is exempt, go home and be with your wives. Thus correcting that ancient mistake of Asa, which sort of cursed the place of Mispah. After that, they're victorious in battle, and eventually they rededicate the Ban Magdash, thus bringing the story of Mispah full circle. And what emerges is, I believe, an amazing lesson on the power of Teshubah. Teshubah is not just about me and my mistakes, Sometimes it's also about looking around the world and seeing some place where something wrong was done that you have the ability to fix and going there and fixing it. Thus, perhaps changing something of historical proportions, changing the course of history, which is exactly what Yudama Kabi did. And I think we can take that lesson with us on Tzom Gedalia. Thanks so much for watching. Have an easy, meaningful fast. And to school the Shanim Rabot.